Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to STI, Suomi Torah International Weekly Shabbat Torah portion reading and discussion with Chris from the Scatterlings. Today we are on week 24, Vaikra, reading from Leviticus chapter 1 through chapter 6 and verse 7. Let's begin. Yes. Um, well, let's start off with a, with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you that we can be reading this and that we can be sharing this amongst the people. We thank you, Father, that you bless it to our souls and that we can learn by it and that we can increase in knowledge of you. And um, we thank you that you settled this in our Ruach. In the name of Yahusha Mashiach, Amen and Amen. Yeah, so today we were without James and Lee. They are having their uh, Pesach in uh, Tennessee, I believe. So um, we we pray that everything's uh, joyous and lovely there. And uh, we'll continue then without them this week. Um, as Daniel said, it's Vaikra or Leviticus chapter 1 to 6. And we'll continue with the reading. And Yahweh called unto Moshe and spoke unto him out of the tabernacle of the assembly, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel and say unto them, If any one of you bring an offering unto Yahweh, he shall bring your offering of cattle and even eth the herd and of the flock. This, it, this, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahweh. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill Eth the bullock before Yahweh, and the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle Eth the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And he shall flay eth the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron the priest, the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay wood in order upon the fire. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay eth the parts and eth the head and eth the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn eth all on the altar to be burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep and of the goats, and of the burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before Yahweh. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall sprinkle eth the blood round about upon the altar. And he shall cut it into pieces with eth his head and eth his fat. And the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahweh. And if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to Yahweh be of fowls, then he shall bring eth his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar and wring off eth his head and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out on the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away eth his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar and upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice and an offering made by fire for sweet savor 
and to Yahweh. Chapter two. I think I think we we'll just carry on because um, we'll just summarize uh, maybe in the end of the next chapter. And when any will offer a meat offering unto Yahweh, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take thereout his handful of the flour thereof and of the oil thereof with all the frankincense thereof. And the priest shall burn at the memorial of it upon the altar to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. And remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. And if you bring an oblation of a meat offering, bake it in oven. And it shall be matzah cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or matzah wafers anointed with oil. And if your oblation be made a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be of fine flour unleavened mingled with oil, and you shall part it in pieces and pour the oil thereon. It is a meat offering. And if your oblation be a meat offering, offering bacon in a frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And you shall bring it the meat offering that is made of these things unto Yahweh. And when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. And the priest shall take it from the meat, uh, take from the meat offering, if the memorial thereof, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. And it is a thing most holy of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. No meat offering which he shall bring unto Yahweh shall be made with leaven. For he shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering of Yahweh made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruits, he shall offer them unto Yahweh, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor. And every oblation of your meat offering shall you season with salt. Neither shall you suffer the salt of the covenant of your Elohim to be lacking from your meat offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. And if you offer a meat offering of your first fruits unto Yahweh, you shall offer for the meat offering of your first fruits green ears of grain dried by the fire, even the grain beaten out of full ears. And you shall put oil upon it and lay frankincense thereon. It is a meat offering, and the priest shall burn at the memorial of it part of the beaten grain thereof, and part of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Yes, yeah, so, so in the first chapter which we read, we see uh, a lot of meat offerings or offerings of live animals. And um, it's, a, it's a gruesome event. As far as I'm concerned, it's it's not it's not nice to to wring, for example, a dove's neck um, to 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 get the blood out of it, you know, and the side of the altar and um, and the crop, etc. I mean, that's uh, that's something um, that nobody really wants to do, and um, and I, and and you know, I see. That happens um, for these sin offerings. But then in chapter 2, you see that the offerings are of the grain, um, which I think happen more often, is the grain offerings. And uh, even later, I think in chapter 3, we'll see that a lot of the meat offerings were substituted for grain offerings. So um, you might have brought 
the uh, lamb or the uh, unblemished animal, but uh, you would substitute it for a grain offering and the animal would probably go to the priests uh, as, as, as a gifting and then the grain offering would be burnt by fire. And we see that it's not necessarily all the grain offering that is burnt by fire. Uh, a portion thereof is burnt by fire, but some of that goes towards the priest and Aaron's sons. So it's, it's a dual purpose. It's actually feeding the priests as well as uh, the offering of your, of your transgression or of your, uh, your, um, your giving to Yahweh. Um, so it, it's, it's a dual purpose. And I think um, when we always think, well, not always, but when we think of uh, offerings, especially the burnt offerings, we always think that it was always animals and it was always uh, a blood offering. But I don't think that's always the case. And, um, and we know that obviously the main offering was the bread of heaven in Yahusha, uh, which is eventually the offering that is offered once and for all. And uh, there's no more need for any offerings. So if anybody's calling for offerings right now in the new temple or in a, a new temple that is supposed to be built, well, that's an abomination. It's not, it's not right. It's, it's not at all right. And I think we have to go back always to the word and we've got to seek out so sound doctrine, um, which, which we're doing that. Well, I'm doing that little uh, uh, part on, on, on Proverbs. And Proverbs is so clear that sound doctrine is so important. And uh, the woman who is trying to entice you away from sound doctrine is uh, what we all have to be wary of. Uh, not that it's a woman, but it is the uh, seduction, if you like, away from the true word or away from the, the um, sound doctrine in the word towards, towards really an ill doctrine. And um, that, that we get, uh, I would say, with age, but also with study and with, with, uh, with, with constant seeking out uh, of Scripture. Um, we see here that uh, the offering of salt, and I enjoyed thinking about that today when we did this portion, is because in the, in the Besorah, in the New Testament, if you like, it talks about us, the Kodeshim, being the salt of the earth. And uh, if, if we are the salt of the earth, then, then we mustn't lose our savor. We mustn't lose uh, our, our, our salt um, our salt flavor, because that is uh, very, very important. Um, so, yeah, um, let us continue then. And then obviously, sorry, let me just continue in the green ears of the grain drained by fire, because at the moment, because we are in the season, um, Pesach being tonight, um, uh, well, Pesach is 14 days from the new moon. The new moon was on the 10th. So 14 days from the new moon is tonight. It's the 24th. Um, now, and that's in Aviv, because why Aviv is a word that describes the barley harvest. When it is in Aviv, the barley harvest is ready to be harvested. Now, the first fruits of the barley harvest are plucked, and then they are dried by next to the fire. Next to a fire, they, sta they stand them up, and then they are dried. The ears are dried, and then 
after a certain amount of time, they can remove that barley and use it for a bread or uh, whatever they want to do with it. And um, I think that we see in verse 14, it says, And if you offer a meat offering of your first fruits unto Yahweh, you shall offer the meat offering of your first fruits, green ears of grain, dried by the fire, if even the grain beat out of the full ears. Um, so here we see the, uh, uh, the method of the first fruit, um, which happened during this period of matzah, um, which happens the first eve of matzah is tomorrow um, or the next day after the Pesach. If we remember what happened in the desert, uh, it was the Pesach meal. The next day they sojourned into the desert and they had their lumps of dough already attached to themselves to, uh, on their shoulder. And that was without leaven. And then the next evening, uh, the first of matzah began. In other words, the first day of the seven days of which the first and the seventh day is a holy convocation or a Sabbath. Um, so I, th I hope that I hope I have explained that okay, because a lot of people are confused about that. Uh, they think Pesach is a holy day. It's not a holy day. It is, it is a holy meal. It is a holy uh, time to, to, to uh, think about Yahusha and what he's done. But it is not a Sabbath day of rest. Um, the next day will be the Sabbath day of rest, which is Matzah, the first day of Matzah. Um, so even, even, you know, the green ears of grain, that also happened 40 days later, or rather, sorry, 50 days later, when, um, when the, the ears of wheat were in harvest. Um, so, you know, the same process of first fruits would take place again. So, um, yeah. Uh, Lois, you've got something to add? Well, I at last year we were studying the calendar, and I I, I, I stumbled or I uh, couldn't quite understand how on the thirteenth, on the day of the thirteenth, his disciples met with him and said, "Where do you want us to prepare the Pesach meal?" And wow. that made it strange because, like, how do you have a Pesach meal when you are during the daylight hours of day thirteen of the first month? And um, I listened to a speaker. And it was really cool because they ate it that night, which yes. is actually the 14th. So the yes. 14th, the Pesach meal is the fort is the night of the 14th, not the evening of the 14th. Like yes. not going into yes. so that is the Pesach meal. Yes. And then they had preparation day where they prepared the oh, what's that? What's the seven day the holiday? I um, forget going into the matzah, matzah or yeah, they're going the into matzah. Yes. So then they have preparation day where they prepare the matzah meal and they eat it on the 15th. That's the holy meal. And clarity sure. just clicked in for all those verses. I was like, mm. oh, that solved it for me. So uh, yes. yes, because you see, in <clears throat> in our church's structure, um, not much thought has been given to these feasts. Um, mm -hmm. And not much uh, sort of has been handed down uh, with the feasts of Israel, or it's actually the feasts of Yah. Uh, it's not the feasts of Israel, it's the feasts of Yah. Um, but it was given to the Israelites, uh, or Yasharel, if you like, <clears throat> excuse me, in the desert. So, um, yes, that's exactly it. We are uh, completely, um, our minds are completely changed because of the Roman system that has been brought in. The Roman system has taken away the, the, the weeks. It's made the first day of the week um, very important and now changed it to a Monday and not a Sunday anyway. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the seventh day was was Sabbath, and Sabbath is seven. It's not one or three. So um, that's been taken away, and it's been uh, changed by the Roman system to the venerable day of the sun, which is Sunday worship, which is never Yah's calendar. Mm -hmm. So they've changed the times, and they've also changed the laws, and the laws being the Ten Devarim, or the Ten Commandments, which you can go and see in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a Roman Bible, it's not the same. Um, and and I, I love, I've got people whom I know who are uh, Catholic. So I, I'm not uh, mocking or knocking the people. I am just stating what has happened and it's history. And one can go and look at history in Google. It's very, very quickly. You can do that. And um, you can find exactly what has happened. So it is important, I think. And it is um, as you said, uh, Lois, it's a light bulb moment kind of thing that happens because you realize that the days start at that time um, and, and, and you actually count it to the next day, which, which yeah, that doesn't quite make sense. It takes quite a long time to understand how that, yeah. how that sort of works, you know. Well, to wrap, to change our thinking. But you know another thing, Chris? I saw that as a picture of when the sun goes down, you can't see the sun, but it's there. And is that not another, like a shadow picture or some kind of a future picture to show us how to count the month? Because when the moon goes black, it's like the sun going down. We can't see the moon, but it's going to start to wane, wax, one of those words. It's going to start to increase no, even though we yeah. can't see it. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. as soon as it goes black, that ends. And that to me is how it, it is. As soon as the sun goes down, it turns black. That begins the next day. And I thought, is one a picture of another? So we see it every month. We see the picture. And that was yes. long before, you know, we needed to count that. So anyways, I saw that connection too. That right. the, just because we can't see the sun, it's gone down. It's that same, it's starting. It's going around and going to come up to us just yeah. like the moon. But yeah. I could be wrong. Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. And I've now started... Uh, I don't know why, but I've started studying the stars and the constellations and the um, and the cycles of the moon. And in, in in a little bit more depth, I've been I've been sort of uh, looking at that. And you know, there's some beautiful apps to download to see what's going on. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's it, it is important and it is for signs and for times, and especially now on the eighth of april we know that there is the uh the eclipse over the usa which um which completes the three eclipse last eclipses which complete the aleph in the paleo hebrew so it's definitely a sign of times i believe and it's and it's a uh, and it's and yah yah speaks to us through these periods in the heaven from from the stars the signs and that goes back to um, genesis 1 um, where he put these things in the sky um, to for signs and for times so i think it's important and i think one has to uh you know take heed um definitely to to that all right so uh let's let's start with chapter three and if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, for he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before Yahweh, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aaron, Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle eth the blood upon the altar round about. And he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. <clears throat> eth the fat that covers eth the inwards, and eth the fat which is upon the inwards. 
and eth the two kidneys, and eth the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and eth the call above the liver, which with the kidneys, sorry, it shall, it shall he take away. And Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahweh. If his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto Yahweh be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer before Yahweh, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it before the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aaron's sons shall sprinkle eth the blood thereof round about upon the altar, and he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, the fat thereof and the whole rump, it shall, it shall he take off hard by the backbone, and eth the fat that covers eth the inwards, and eth all the fat that is upon the inwards, and eth the two kidneys, and eth the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and eth the call above the liver. With the kidneys, it shall be he take away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before Yahweh, and he shall lay eth his hand upon the head of it, and kill it before the tabernacle of the assembly. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle eth the blood thereof upon the altar about around, around about, sorry. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even his offering made by fire unto Yahweh, and eth the fat that covers eth inwards, and eth all the fat that is upon the inwards, and eth the two kidneys, and eth the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and eth the call above the liver with the kidneys, he shall take it away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is Yahweh's. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that he shall eat neither the fat nor blood. That is the end of chapter 3. Um, and so Daniel will read chapter 4 and 5, and then 6 up to 7 for us. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yeshua'el, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahuwah concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let the, him bring for his sin which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto Yahuwah for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before Yahuwah. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of assembly. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle of the blood seven times before Yahuwah, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yahuwah, which is the tabernacle of assembly, and shall pour the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the ascending smoke offering. 
which is at the door of the tabernacle of assembly. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock from the sin offering, the fat that covers the inwards, and shall the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat of that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the coal above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. As it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the ascending smoke offering, and the skin of the bullock, and all his flesh with his head, and with his legs, and his inwards, and his tongue, even the whole bullock shall be carried forth without the camp unto a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood with fire. Where the ashes are poured, out shall he be burned. And if the whole assembly of Yisrael sins through ignorance, and the thing he hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of Yahuwah, concerning things which should not be done, are, are guilty. And are guilty. Uh, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the assembly shall offer a young bullock for the sin, and bring him before the tabernacle of the assembly. And the elders of the assembly shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before Yahuwah, and the bullock shall be killed before Yahuwah. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest, priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before Yahuwah, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar which is before Yahuwah, that is in the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the ascending smoke offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And he shall take all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp, and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the assembly. When a ruler has sinned and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahuwah Elohai concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty, or if it is his sin wherein he has sinned, come to his knowledge. He shall bring his offering, a kit of the goats, a male without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat, and kill it in the place where they kill ascending smoke offering before Yahuwah. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take off the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of the ascending smoke offering, and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of the ascending smoke offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar, as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. And if any one of the common people sin, uh, and if uh, any one of the common people sin through ignorance while he does somewhat against any of the commandments of Yahuwah concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty, or if it is his sin which he has sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kit of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin which 
he has sinned, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay the sin offering in the place of the ascending smoke offering. And the priest shall take of the blood the thereof with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of the ascending smoke offering, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they killed the ascending smoke offering. And the priest shall take, out, take off the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of the ascending smoke offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away the, all the fat thereof, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar, according to the offerings made by fire unto Yahweh. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he has committed, and it shall be forgiven him. I think Daniel, um, just continue um, until the end. And if a soul sins and hears the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he has seen or known of it, if he does not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch, touch an, an, any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of unclean cattle or the carcass of the unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if, if he touch the uncleanness of man, whatsoever uncleanness it be that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be he be hid from him, when he knows of it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a soul were seven of, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good. Whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him, when he knows of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be, when he shall be guilty in one of these things, that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto Yahweh, for his sin which he has sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. And if he not be able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass, which he has committed, two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto Yahweh one for a sin offering, and the other for an ascending smoke offering. And he shall bring them unto the priest, who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first, and wring off his head from his neck, but shall not divide it asunder. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out of the bottom of the altar, it is a sin offering. And he shall offer the second for an ascending smoke offering, according to the manner 
and the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sin which he has sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he had sinned shall bring for his offering the tenth part of the e an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. Then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it, even a memor memorial thereof, and burn it on the altar, according to the offerings made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin that he has skinned in one of those, and it's not skinned, sinned in one of these, and it shall be forgiven him, and the remnant shall be priest as an oblation. And Yahweh spoke unto Mose, saying, If a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance in the holy things of Yahuwah, then he shall bring for his trespass unto Yahweh a ram without blemish of the flocks, with your estimation by sickles of a silver. After the sickle of the sanctuary for a trespass offering, and he shall make amends for the harm that he has done in the holy thing, and shall add the fifth part thereto, and give it into the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which he are forbidden to be done by the commandments of Yahuwah, through he knew it not, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. And uh, he shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock with your estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance, wherein he erred and knew it not, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He has certainly trespassed against Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a transgression against Yahuwah, lie into his neighbor, in that which he was delivered in him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or has deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost, and lies concerning it, and swear seven oaths falsely, in any of all this that a man does, sinning therein, then it shall be, because he has sinned, and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he has deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or all that about which he was sworn seven oath falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle, and shall add the fifth part more, thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertains in the day of his trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto Yahweh, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with your estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before Yahuwah, and it shall be forgiven for him for anything of all that he has done in trespassing therein. Yeah, thank thank you so much, Daniel. Um, yeah, so there's a whole lot of ways and um, a whole lot of remedies for sin in this passage. What is interesting to me is not the sin, but when you know that you have sinned. Uh, so it's actually like a recognition of, okay, I have trespassed or I have touched anything unclean without knowing. 
And the sin only realizes when you actually realize that point. Um, and I think it's the same as us. You know, the, Yah will not give you uh, more than what you cannot handle. Uh, he's not going to broke break a, br a, a bruised reed. Um, and so Yah is not going to show you all your sins immediately as soon as you understand who he is. He's going to take it step by step and he's going to be gentle in in teaching you the ways um because that's who he is it's an amazing story it's just that's how he works he's 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 forgiving with us um which which is ab absolutely lovely um and it's so unlike uh the the stories that we that we that we often uh, have conjured up in our minds about who Yah is, uh, for sure he's holy. That is, that is a given. Um, but he is gracious and he has grace for all of us. So, um, and there's always forgiveness. Um, uh, what I enjoyed in verse 15 of chapter 5 is that the, the ram... Uh, can be bought or substituted with the shekels of silver, which uh, which which just rings a bell to me in the fact that the Messiah was given up for 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 uh, for silver, and also that the Good Samaritan which I believe is a metaphor for the Messiah. And he binds up the wounded with wine and oil, uh, which we see here, the blood and the oil uh, are two parts of this ritual of, uh, uh, of sacrifice or of offering. Um, and then... Uh, we see that he takes the the wounded to the inn and pays for the two days which is needed before he goes. And then when he comes back, he says, and I will come back and I will restore that, uh, that, that is owed. So inflation is not with you. Inflation, <laughs> he has already worked out a price and a fee. He's paid it. Um, it doesn't matter how much people want to add inflation. It doesn't matter. The price and what he has paid has been already set. It's done. So we can just be extremely grateful for the work that, that has already done. Um, Lois? I'm, as I pondered these verses... I couldn't help but wonder if there isn't some application to his final return. And so all of his children that are in trespass and don't know it will be given an opportunity at that point. Hmm. Once it's revealed to them, because they don't know it, they're blind. Oh, um, yeah. And whether, whether they be the Christian children or whether they be the Torah roots children or whether they be the you know, we could be blind on the calendar, uh, and and or be the 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 um, Judaism children. All that are his will be given a chance to bring their offering. And I think of the scripture in Ezekiel where we will go up yearly. And I I just think there's a tie-in to to his mercy and grace for us. Yes. To show that. Yes, I, I'm with you on that. I mean, Yah will definitely give the world a chance and uh, a chance to acknowledge sin. I think um, there, there does come, however, a time where if you deny uh, the Messiah enough, it will be the end. It, it, there isn't a place of repentance anymore for, for people who constantly deny, constantly reject um, for what he has done because of the magnitude of what is done. Uh, so, 
Yeah, it 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 is. It's it. Yah is Yah is gracious. He's loving. Um, he has done this work for us, and I think um, it's beautiful that we have been given the opportunity to worship Yah in this situation. I think that is lovely. So, uh, Judy. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Maybe the people we know now are the ones that we will help because we're supposed to be kings and priests. Who are we going to be ruling over? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, you know, and, and are we going to be ruling over people or just being part of the ruling? Because, you know, the new, the new Yerushalayim, put it that way, is, uh, you know, I, 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 we'll all be thinking, one thought won't we i mean it's 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 the same thought it'll be the same holiness um it'll be there won't be any evil there won't be any illness there won't be any um you know uh, these things that 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 bother the soul and and the body so yeah that uh, fascinating you know fascinating to think about it yeah definitely well, you know, a voice behind you saying, don't go that way, go this way. Maybe we're those voices. <laughs> correct. Correct. Well, you know, we know that we've been given the Ruach Elohim, which is really the most important. That Yah said, it's better that I go away. It's better that I uh, say that I pray the Father and he sends you the Ruach Elohim, which will guide you into to all truth and righteousness. So, uh, you know, it's not necessarily our works uh, that makes us righteous. Um, I think righteous works are the fruit of the Ruach within. But um, the works that we, uh, that, that we work in the flesh or in this body that is on the earth are still not perfect. They, uh, by, by any means of the imagination... So we, we've got to we, we've got to be um, just as we've been given mercy and grace, we have to give mercy and grace. And I think you know the seal of that or the mark of that is love. And uh, if we have no love for the people who irritate um, the uh, you, you, for instance, the body or the or, or the the space that you live in. If we have no love for that for those people, um, we've got to pray that we can show the love of Yah uh, to to these people, which is not easy. It's uh, you know it's it's a it's it's a and that I think is indicative of these chapters that we've just read. Because these chapters that we've just read is not easy. It's not an easy read. And it's filled with things that very few people want to do. Or I don't think really anybody wants to do it. But, you know, it, it, it's something that we don't want to get involved in. Um, so it's very similar. It's very similar. You know, you don't want to get involved in teaching or trying to tell people truth um and try and tell and try and tell people over and over again how much yah loves us etc etc but um we've got to do it there's there's a duty for us to do that and um i think the duty is way heavier it's such a it's such a a, a weighty matter uh to tell people than to want to be seen uh, as, uh, you know, uh, highly esteemed amongst men. Uh, we, we sometimes have to be the fool, you know. <laughs> Good. All right. So the, 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 the uh, Haftorah is out of 1 Samuel, and it's 1 Samuel um, chapter 15. I'm going to read from verse 1. Shemuel said unto El Shol, Yahweh sent me to anoint you to be king over his people and over Yasharel. Now therefore hearken you unto the voice of the words of Yahweh, 
This says Yahweh Tevot. I remember it that which Amalek did to Yashorel and how he waited for him in the way. And when he came up from Mitzrayim. Now, go and smite it, Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Shoal gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 ethmen of Yoda. And Shoal came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Shoal said unto the Konanim, Go, depart, and get you down from among the Amalekim, lest I destroy you with them. For he showed kindness to all the children of Yasharel when they came out of Mitzrayim. So the Quinanim departed from amongst the Amalekim, and Shaul smote at the Amalekim from Havilah unto the come to Shur, unto you, until you come to Shur, that is over against Mitzrayim. And he took Eth Agag, the king of the Amalekim, alive, and utterly destroyed Eth the people with the edge of the sword. But Shaul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of Yahweh to El Shemuel, Shemuel saying, It grieves me that I have set up Eth Shaol to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and has not performed Eth my commandments. And it grieved Shamuel, and he tried unto El Yahweh that night, cried unto El Yahweh that night. And when Shamuel rose early to meet Shaul in the morning, it was told of Shamuel, saying, Shaul has come to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Shamuel came unto El Shaul, and Shaul said unto him, Blessed be you of Yahweh, I have performed eth the common commandment of Yahweh. And Shemuel said, What means then the bleating of the sheep in my ear and the lowering of the oxen, the lowering of the oxen which I hear? And Shemuel said, They have brought them from the El Melekim, from the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto Yahweh Eloheka, and the rest, if we have utterly destroyed. Then Shemuel said unto El Shaul, Stay, and I will tell you if what Yahweh has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Stay on. And Shemuel said, When you were little in your own sight, were you not made the head of the tribes of Yasharel? And Yahweh anointed you king over Yasharel, and Yahweh sent you on a journey, and he said, Go and utterly destroy Eth the sinners and Eth the Amalekim, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then did you not obey the voice of Yahweh, but did fly upon the spoil and, e and did evil in the sight of Yahweh? And Shaul said unto El Shamil, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of Yahweh, and I have gone the way which Yahweh sent me, and have brought Eth Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekim. But the people took the spoil, sheep, oxen, of the chief things, which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto Yahweh Eloheka and Gilgal. And Shemuel said, Has Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? as in obeying the voice of Yahweh. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahweh, he has also rejected you from being king. And Sheol said unto Samuel, I have sinned 
and I have transgressed at the commandment of Yahweh and at your words, because I feared at the people and obeyed their voices. Now, therefore, I pray you, pardon if my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship Yahweh. And Shemuel said unto El Shol, I will not turn, return with you, for you have rejected the word of Yahweh, and Yahweh has rejected you from being king over Yasharel. And as Shemuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and he rent it. And Shemuel said unto him, Yahweh has rent eth the kingdom of Yasharel from you this day, and have given it to a neighbor of yours that is better than you. And also the strength of Yasharel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray you, before the elders of my people and before Yasharel, and turn again with me, that I may worship Yahweh Eloheka. So Shemil turned again after Shaul, and Shaul worshipped Yahweh. Then when Shemuel, then said Shemuel, Bring he hither to me, Eth Agag, the king of the Amalekim. And Agag came unto, the, uh, unto him delicately. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Shemuel said, As your sword has made woman childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Shemuel hewed at Agag in pieces before Yahweh in Gilgal. Then Shemuel went to Ramah, and Shaul went up to the house of Giva of Shaul. And Shemuel came no more to see Shaul in the day of his death. Nevertheless, Shemuel mourned at Shaul, and Yahweh repented that he had made Shaul king of Yasharel. This is such a loaded uh, chapter. Uh, you know, it's, it's so informative of how we are that we don't listen to Scripture. We don't listen to the word of Yah. We want to conjure up things in our own minds, and we want to conjure up doctrine and believe doctrine from all sorts of ways and people around us um, and not take into account what Yahweh has said in his word. It's very important for us to listen to what he says and do what he says, the Shema, right? And here we see that a duty was given to them because the Amalekim were the sons of the fallen. And um, so this seed was completely against Yah's people right from the beginning. And they caused much trouble and hurt for the children of Yasharel. And that's why everything had to be, had to be eliminated um, because everything was tainted and everything was touched by the sorceries, if you like, of the fallen watchers. Um, so, you know, we, we, we see such iconic, if you like, uh, scripture from this part. Um, for instance, uh, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Um, uh, you know, and, and to be obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than of fat rams. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the obedience unto Yah uh, will spare you um, to be ashamed. Uh, you know, to me, uh, it really speaks of of Shema, of hearing and doing, of, of ascribing your principles and your life to the word of Yah and not to, not to have our own understanding, um, which, which, which is a, a, a theme of the word of Yah. 
And then uh, verse 29 also, um, and also the strength of Yasharal will not lie or repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. So Yah is not, he doesn't have to answer to us. And I think that's so important for us to understand that Yah has set things in place. He's always the same and therefore he's stable. He's faithful. Yah is always faithful. Uh, but we tend to, to be very wavy in our faith and uh, trusting him in a lot in some things and then not so much in others. Uh, but Yah is not like that. And Yah doesn't have to answer to us. Um, we, we have to live in his statutes. And when we live in his statutes, he becomes our father. And when he is our father, he protects us like sons and daughters. And I think that's, uh, that, that is something that we all must ascribe to and, uh, and, and press in towards is living according to his will um, and his way, you know. So, yeah. I don't know if there's anybody else that would love to add something to that. If there isn't, then we'll go to the Gospel of Mark. And Chris, if I could just pick my nose in again. Yes, sure. <laughs> Please. There's there's two um, words for repent, and one is shub, and one is to be sorry. And and God didn't shub; He didn't turn. He was He was sad that it had took place. And I think that that's really important because God never repented like He sinned. He repented like it. it kills my heart that you're doing yes. this stuff. I'm so choked with you, but I still love you. Sort of like we are with our kids. And sure. so I think that's really interesting, but it is the most common use that to, he wants us to be sorry. He wants us to have a repented heart, a sorry heart, a, a, you know, a heart that's soft and tender, not stone-like. So sure. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, that's, that's true. Uh, you know, we, and that's the other analogy that sort of talks to this is the stone, the heart of stone, that he removes the heart of stone. Now, you know, we, we can't take the whole of scripture literally. There are figure, there are, there are metaphors and things that Yah may, uses to make uh, the literature of the word rich and to give us images in our mind. And, uh, you know, so we can't say that, when he says such a thing, then that's the way it is, right? We've got a stony heart. Well, I've never seen a stony heart being taken out of a person. But I have seen stubbornness taken out of my own heart. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, okay, so let's understand that there's a lot of metaphors that Yah uses. Uh, it's almost like the parables. To get a point through into our minds that we can understand, um, so yeah, I, I think that is that's that's a lovely thought as well. He doesn't have to repent for sure. He's made the world, he's done it, he can destroy it, he can take it away if he wants, but he chooses his people out of it. And how do we know? How do we know if we are part of his people where it says if you do my commandments, if you love me, you will do my commandments. So, you know, that is a sign. It's once again a sign of Yah's people is doing his will. All right. So um, the gospel of Mark uh, chapter 7. Then came together unto him the parashim, a certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem, And when they saw some of the Talmudim eat bread with, with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault for the parashim and all Yehudahim, except they washed their hands oft and eat not, holding their tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash their hands and eat not, and many of the things there be which they have received to hold as 
the washing of the cups and the pots and the brazen vessels and of the tables. Then the Pharisee and the scribes asked him, Why walk not your Talmudim according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? And he answered and he said unto them, Well, has Yeshayahu prophesied, sorry, has Yeshayahu prophesied of your hypocrites as it is written? This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines at the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of Yahweh, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and of many other such things he do. And he said unto them, Full well he reject the commandment of Yahweh, that he may guard your own tradition. For Moshe said, Honor eth your father and eth your mother. And who curses his father and mother, let him die the death. But he say, if a man shall say unto his father, it's korban, that is to say, a gift, by wherever you might be profited by me, he shall be free. And he suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother making the word of Yahweh to no effect through your tradition, which he have delivered, and many such like things he do. And when he had called all the people unto him, <coughs> he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they which defile the man. And if many men is to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his Talmudim asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are he so without understanding also? Do he not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enters into a man cannot defile him because it enters not into his heart but into his belly and goes out in the draft purging all food and then he said which comes out of the man that defiles a man for within out of the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts adulteries fornications murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. <clears throat> All these things come from within and defile the man. And from thence he arose and went to the borders of Tzor and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man known it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose daughter had unclean ruach heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Yevani, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Yahusha said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she answered and she said unto him, Yes, Adonai, let the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto him, For this saying, go your way. The devil is gone out of your daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Yeah. Um, you know, once again, it's what we talked about. It's the doctrines of man. We don't listen to the doctrines of man. We don't do the doctrines of man. We do what Yah commands in his word. And we've got to understand doctrine. We've got to search. We've got to seek. We've got to study so that we can be found with sound doctrine. So it's very, very important. Um, so, you know, there, there is nothing, for verse 15, there is nothing without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him 
Those are the things defile the man. And we know that the hearts of men are exceedingly evil. So we have to always be in touch with the word of Yah so that he can change us. He can change our thoughts. He can take out that heart of stone, give us a heart that is tender uh, towards his word and towards the Ruach Elohim. Because the Ruach Elohim, through the word of Yah, teaches us into all truth and righteousness. And I think that's something that we we study to do. We, we, we seek him out. We knock and the door shall be opened and we seek and we will find. And uh, this does not come uh, by doing nothing. This comes um, as he, you know, a, a very important part here is the tradition of men. Um, in verse eight, it says, lying, uh, lying aside the commandment of Yahweh, he holds to the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things do. And he unto them, full when he reject the commandment of Yahweh, that may guard your own tradition. So we replace Yah's commandment with our own thoughts or the doctrines of men. And we do that. We do that very, very easily because we have heard these things uh, in church and we we just regurgitate it because we've heard it enough and that's how witchcraft works witchcraft will tell you the same thing over and over again until you believe it and we've seen that in the world and in, in the media but verse 10 is very important for Moshe said honor eth your father and your mother and whosoever curses the father and the mother let him die the death well, that is the fifth commandment. And the fifth commandment is extremely important because it's not about the parents. It's not about who they are and what they are. It is about the union that they have made and they have caused life to come into you and you've been born. And Yah brings life. So you are not a mistake. You are somebody who is wonderfully wrought and made within this union. And in this union can only be man and woman. It cannot be man and man or woman and woman, which the world is so confused about today. So when it says that your death, your death, you know, when it says in the commandment that if you do obey, then you will have long life. It extends to your children and your children's children. When you do not honor this and this union and the way that Yah has created man and woman and the way that it is that he has created mankind, then your prodigy dies, your family dies, your name dies, everything dies. And um, this is one of the steps of the rest of the commandments. Because if you honor your mother and your father, then you will not steal, you will not murder, you will not rape, you will not do other things that bring disrespect to the name or to Yah, essentially. Um, and that's why it's so important to understand that and to, to forgive and to uh, understand the, the honor of the father and the mother, no matter who they are. Because once we honor them, we honor Yah. And through that, we have access to him being our father. And when Yah is our father, he makes all things new. He makes your mind new. He makes your life new. He gives you purpose. He gives you love. He gives you friends. He gives you people all over the world, which we associate with and we talk with. Um, even though, even, even though in our own families, sometimes it's so difficult to talk like this, to talk freely and to talk lovingly um, to other people. So, you know, this is important. And we've obviously got a family that will last forever if we continue in his way and in his will. And I think that's our heart. It's the heart of this group. It's the heart of everyone who's involved in um, in giving a message about this Besora is that everyone will realize that we are living eternity now 
we are living right from the decision that you make you start living in eternity you will not die you carry on um so maybe your flesh will die but your soul will live forever and we will be with you and i think that's uh, that's the essence of honor your father and mother it goes much further than just the two people um which you are associated with and come from um and with that uh, i would just like to pray and uh, unless somebody wants to say something or someone wants to add something that's yes please lois well there's interesting because the kinos that they that the pharisees say is slightly different in verse 2 than the kino or however that word is said in verse 15 that jesus or yeshua um uh, refers to so what they're saying is uh they're accusing them of wa watching wa eating food with uh their traditionally defiled unclean hands i recently heard and i'm not sure it's true so i'll just run it by this group and maybe you know but what they did is they actually closed their fists and they poured water over their fists past their wrists well that did not clean their hand that you would eat with i've never eaten with my fists i just you know, right. so it, it's, it's actually kind of interesting. But when you go to verse 15, uh, when when Jesus ch or Yeshua changes it, when he does the defile there, it mm -hmm. it is it's to make profane. And so mm -hmm. he says that it's he and he says it's not um, how would I say it? It's not uh, it's not what what profanes us is our heart. So yes. they're trying to take it from consuming something with dirty mm. hands or some kind of ceremony and clean hands that would defile yeah. you. And Jesus said, or Yeshua says, no, it's your heart. It's yeah. your heart. It makes it so clear if you kind of just check those, which is what Absolutely. you said. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, the thing is that that's exactly it. You know, we, we, we make, um, we make doctrines of men or men's doctrines or, or man-made laws and even Moshe's law is questionable at some times um, because, uh, you know, he says that Moshe gave you a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that it was not so from the beginning, uh, meaning that Moshe's law or laws about divorce were not as Yah intended. And he did that because of the hardness of your heart, he says. So, Yah, even in his grace, gave them a little bit of leeway to sin, um, which, which uh, in relation to the previous chapters that we read out of Leviticus, seems not logical almost, right? But, you know, this is the essence of the Yah we serve. It, he is just unbelievable in the way that he um, loves us, uh, his prized creation. Um, mm -hmm. So to me, that gives me great hope and, 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 and great joy to think that there's so much love within Yah that he's not, he's, he's, he hasn't got a stick on your back all the time. That's not what he's about. Uh, and he'll take even the murderer, even the worst of the worst. Uh, you know, I think of, say, uh, the movie uh, Cross in the Switchblade. You know, things like that. You know, that that we've sort of know. I know the youngsters might not know that. But, you know, there are stories where the worst of the worst have been changed completely. And, you know, that's the love that he has for the world. If you have a tender heart, if you just understand that he has this compassion for you and for everybody else who has sinned, and there's always, there's always forgiveness and there's always a way out. Amen. Um, here, as you said, Lois, it's not about what you put in with your dirty hands. It is what your heart is conjuring up. And 
the heart of man is exceedingly evil. It conjures up all sorts of nonsense and uh, maliceness and manipulations. Um, but Yah loves us, and um, uh, yeah, it's just so you beautiful. That I'm just thinking of uh, Proverbs, um, uh, of which I'm, uh, I'm doing a little sort of study, if you like, uh, of well, Proverbs. Before you do that, can, can yeah. I just say that when he, when you go to the end, he proves it, because what he casts out that girl is not food. He casts out demons. He, he finishes Correct. that whole thing with saying, they're saying food going in defiles you. And he proves it at the end yeah. that it's not. And that I yeah. just love. That, that picture of summation, that grand, I'm like, wow, could we not get that? I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the food. It's, it's the unclean hands which hold the food, right? So you're touching. Yeah. Anyway, but, but um, uh, chapter 6 of Proverbs and verse 17, or rather 16, says these six things Yahweh hates. Yes, seven are abomination unto him. Number one in 17, and there is no number one, I'm just saying number one, is a proud look. Number two is a lying tongue. Number three is hands that shed innocent blood. Number four is a heart that deceives wicked imaginations. And number five is feet that are swift in running to mischief. Number six is a false witness that speaks lies. And number seven is he that sows discord among the brethren. And, you know, uh, there are so many slight nuances of those things that I've just read that we do every day um, without realizing it. You know, with, without realizing it, we might manipulate slightly or, uh, you know, change the situation to suit ourselves, etc., etc. Oh, sorry. My dogs have just gone mad. And, um, yeah, so, you know, this is the point. It's deceitful and uh, the imaginations of the heart, which we have to protect ourselves against. And we do that by the word of Yah and getting it in and understanding who he is and uh, and he does that. He does that work, actually. It's not even us, right? He helps us. It's not even your power that uh, that holds that. It's Yah's power that holds you. So, yeah. So with that, let's pray. And then we can say Shabbat Shalom. Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your instruction. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you've given us the ability to read. We thank you that you've given us eyes to see and eyes to see and ears to hear. And I thank you, Father, that uh, even though Chris has been cut off, that you are here in the midst and you will uh, plant this word deep in our heart that we will not have stony hearts, but we will have hearts of flesh that love you and serve you. Bless Su Suami Torah and all that listen to it in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lois.